Lux presents Hollywood. Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Flakes, bring you the Lux Radio Theater. Proudly presenting Photoplay Magazine's gold medal award picture, The Stratton Story, starring James Stewart and June Allison. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. William Keeley. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. This is a very special evening in the Lux Radio Theater because we present the screenplay that you have chosen as your favorite for the year 1949. Tonight's play was selected by the moviegoers of America in a nationwide poll conducted by Photoplay magazine. It's the Stratton story. In the Stratton story, you'll hear James Stewart and June Allison, the original stars of this metro golden Mayor hit. It's the drama of one man's superhuman courage in the face of an overwhelming handicap. A true story of a real-life hero, Monty Stratton. After tonight's performance, the Stratton story will receive Photoplay Magazine's coveted gold medal award, one of Hollywood's highest honors. The vote of the American people is what counts, whether it's for a motion picture or a product. And Lux Flakes have been your choice for years, whenever housewives insisted on quality and economy. An award of confidence we know Lux Flakes will continue to win. Now, here's the curtain for Act One of The Stratton Story, starring James Stewart as Monty Stratton and June Allison as Ethel, with John McIntyre as Barney. This is the true story of a young American, a story told to you by a man who knew him well enough to help shape his entire life. A man named Barney Wilde. I met Monty Stratton one autumn afternoon near a little country town, Wagner, Texas. I was bumming my way to California when I saw a ball game going on. After the game, I went looking for the fellow who'd pitch. You calling me, mister? Yeah, I... Hey, can you wait a minute? That game you just pitched. Nice going, son. Thanks, mister. You ever think of pitching regular professional baseball? Oh, I guess that's just about all I ever do think about. Well, what are you wasting your time around here for? Wasting my time? I get $3 every time I pitch a game. $3, huh? Son, I think you and I ought to have a little talk. Where are you heading? Home, just about four miles up this road here. Four miles, huh? That'll probably kill me, but... Son, I sure like the way you throw a baseball. Thank you, sir. Why, you play ball, mister? Yes, sir, man. Slow down, will you? Where, where'd you play? Where'd you play? Uh, Chicago, Cleveland, Boston. Oh, big legs. Oh, that's right. One time I was a pretty fair catcher. I could teach you a lot about baseball, son. Well, I, I uh, don't quite get it. Yeah, I know. Look at me now. Huh? Down and out or bum. Oh, no, no. I, I didn't mean that. Well, I was a fool. A grand slam double barrel fool. Broke training, hit the bottle. Well, here I am. But seeing you pitch this afternoon was like seeing a dream come true, finding a hot prospect, coming back into baseball. What, you staying around here? Well, not exactly. I, I was on my way to California. Oh. Of course, it doesn't have to be California. Uh-huh. I, uh, I could, uh, well, I might, I might, uh, I could help. You, uh, you ever do any farm work? Oh, I've, uh, Yeah, I... you, you sure look mighty flabby. <laughs> Son, I got muscles I haven't even used yet. Uh-huh. Well, I, uh, I live with my ma. Oh, she, your ma. Uh, yeah, she doesn't think very much of baseball. Well, maybe if I spoke to her... No, no, but... no, you better let me do the talking. You see, mister, this is what us baseball men would call a squeeze play. Now, just let me think on it as we walk home. <laughs> Well, uh, Ma, I uh, was talking to Mr. Wilde here before. He's sort of looking around for something to do, and I thought uh, maybe sort of uh, figure might hole up here for the winter. Don't say. Uh Uh-huh, you know, sort of help out around the place. You know as well as I do, Monty. We can't afford no hired hands. Oh, well, he wouldn't expect any pay, you know, just room and keep. Didn't know you're so overworked, son. Oh, no, no, it's not that, Ma, but just a lot of things need doing. When your father died, Monty... 
He left this place to you. It's yours, and you're old enough to know what you're doing. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Well, I'll, uh... I better get that feed out of the barn. Yeah, yeah, we better get that feed out of the barn. Mr. Weil. Yes, ma'am? This farm's all Monty's got, Mr. Weil, but it's worth something. But you and Monty, well, you go ahead and talk baseball. Maybe someday he'll do as good as you did. I couldn't blame his ma. All baseball meant to her was seeing Monty wind up like... Uh, well, like me. Anyway, I stayed there. And day after day, I tried to pass on to Monty what I knew about the game, what I knew about pitching. And then, around March, it was, I knew there wasn't any more I could teach him. That's it, Monty. You're doing fine, son. Well, no more for today, huh? Well, we barely got started here. That's no workout. Put your jacket on. Keep your arm warm. I've been going to say this all week, Monty. Say what? That you're ready. You're joking. Well, I don't mean you learned all there is to know about pitching, but from here on, you've got to learn it for yourself. We've got to get you some action. Well, not much action around here, Barney. Ah, but there is in California. Jimmy Dykes and the White Sox are starting spring training. The Chicago White Sox? All I have to do is say the word, and Dykes will give you a tryout. He will? Sure. But, but, but uh, out in California. Uh, I know. It's a long ways, and, and you're a mom. Uh, uh-huh. Yeah. Well, uh... Let's uh, go into the house, sir. Looks like we got another squeeze play coming up. You might just as well speak your mind, Monty. You got something to say? Say it. Well, it's just this, uh, Ma. Uh, Barney and I were sort of thinking about taking a little trip out to California. Is that so? Uh huh. What baseball teams out there? That's the Chicago Whites. <laughs> How, how, how'd you know that? I didn't figure you'd be going all that ways for anything important, son. Well, this is important, ma'am. Oh? Uh, worth giving up the farm for? Well, if they take him on, the least he'll get $300 a month. That's a lot of money for just throwing a ball around. And I won't have to give up the farm. I saw Cousin Ernie. He said he'd be glad to take care of it while I'm gone. What makes you so sure they'll give you a try? They try just anybody? Well, they sure don't. But well, Barney and Jimmy Dykes are old friends. Who? He's the manager of the White Sox, so that way I'll get a chance for sure. The land's the only place where you're sure, son. Lots of people don't live on farms, Miss Stratton. Lots of people don't eat regular, too. You... You made up your mind, ain't you, Monty? I... I just gotta give it a try, Ma. Sure, son. Sure. You go on, then. You give it a try. Hey, Red, who's the kid warming up? Kid, Mr. Dykes. The tall, skinny one in the leather jacket. I don't know. I thought you sent him out there. I'll tell you who he is. The best right-hand prospect since Christy Mathis. Barney. Oh, no. <laughs> no, not you again. You bring that kid out here? You bet I did. I want you to have first crack at him. Thanks. He's got everything, Jimmy. I've been working with him all winter. Yeah? Who supplied the hooch? No, 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 Jimmy. No, I haven't had a drop since... <clears throat> well, this is him, Marty. Jimmy Dyke. Oh, I'm sure glad to Just you. Just a second, son. Barney's probably fills your head with a lot of cockeyed ideas. But I can't waste time with every kid he digs up. Jimmy, wait. Now, wait. How many this... times have I told you not to bother me this oh, way? I'm sorry I busted in on you like oh, this. Oh, that boy's mister. hitchhiked and walked miles to get here, Jimmy. Monty, wait a minute, Monty. Don't go running away like that. Hey, you, country. He means you, Monty. Wait a minute. Give me that mitt, will you, Eddie? Come on, country. Throw me a couple. Get that jacket off, Monty. Burn him in, boy. <laughs> That's some uniform country. Well, the Wagner Wildcats, Mr. Dykes. That's the team I've been pitching for, the Wagner Wildcats. My, my. All right, let's see what you got. He really breaks them off, don't he? Simmer down, Barney. So you got a curve. Let me see your fast one. Well, I don't know. Maybe you better work out a while. Keep him around, Barney. He may have something. But for Pete's sake, get him a haircut. Sure, Jimmy, sure. <laughs> What'd I tell you, Marty? I knew he'd give you a chance. Oh, but when? When? What, what are we supposed to do now? Find us a room. Oh, yeah, in a barber shop. Well, we found a hotel and met a few of the players who were staying there. That night, Monty went down to the lobby to kill some time. And in the lobby, he discovered a fascinating pastime. 
Monty had never seen a slot machine before. Ten minutes later, he had a pocket full of quarters and a new friend, a rookie named Eddie Dibson. Eddie was flat broke. He had a date that night with his girl. To make matters worse, she was bringing a friend along. But there was Monty, fresh from the sticks and ready to learn all about nightlife in the city. Well, they're very nice dancers, aren't they? I mean, uh, Dottie and Eddie. Yes, yes, they are. Uh, I... I guess I shouldn't be here at all. Oh? Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, no, 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 no. It isn't you. It's me. I mean, it's Eddie. I, I, I don't know. But for some reason, he seemed awful anxious for me to tag along. Good friend of yours, hmm? Yeah, I, yes, he is. I just met him tonight, though. Come along, he says. I want you to meet the girls, he says. And come along. Oh. Mm-hmm. I'm, uh, I'm sorry I can't ask you to dance, but I don't know how. Oh, that's all right. Uh, I, I guess baseball's about all I know. Well, that's something. Have uh, you seen us work out yet? Yeah. Us? Who's us? The Chicago White Sox? No. No, I guess that's the one thing I've missed. You see, I'm just visiting here. I'm I'm from Omaha. Oh, uh, well, the team looks good. It looks awful good. I tell oh, you. that's very nice. I'll bet you're pretty good yourself. Oh, I don't know. I, I'm still trying out. I'll bet you can hit a baseball pretty far. No, I always, I'm not expected to hit very much. See, I'm, I'm a pitcher. Well, I'll bet you can pitch far. <laughs> you, you don't quite seem to get the idea, do you? You see, I just have to pitch from the mound to the plate. It's just about 60 feet. All right, then. I'll bet you can pitch fast. Well, sometimes you have to sort of rear back and sort of let them go fast. And then other times, you just sort of, sort of whip it like this, you see, and, and curve it in, sort of. And you get in spots and you just sort of float her in. It's a, what you call a change of pace. And then there's um, Speaking some... of change of pace, would you mind telling me something? Just what is that noise? Noise? What? Well, every time you move that, that jingling sound. Jingling? Oh, oh, this. <laughs> huh? <laughs> you see, that they have these, uh, what do you call the machines in the lobby of the hotel. I never saw them before, and I... Sort of wondered about them. Before I knew it, I dropped a quarter in, and a whole lot of fruit started spinning around. And I, then things sort of slid to a stop. And, and out came that. No, no, nothing happened. Not yet. Oh. Well, before I knew it, I was down to my last quarter. I sort of figured I might as well be broke as the way I was, so in went the last quarter, and I... Fruit took off again, oranges and grapefruit and lemons and spinning around like a top. And then all of a sudden, the quarter started popping out like hens through a busted fence. Well, if you don't make it in baseball, Mr. Stratton, you've got a very fine future in gambling. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm through gambling. Why? Well, I, I found out how it feels to lose and what it's like to win. Why keep at it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Now, like I said, this other fella, Eddie Dibson, had come with his girl. But one look at Ethel, and Eddie forgot all about Dottie. Eddie had it all figured out. Where's Dottie been hiding, you? Oh, we'll make a big night out of this, Ethel. I'm going to take you to every spot in town. Oh, I wouldn't think of putting you to all that trouble, Eddie. Trouble! Look, if we're going someplace else, let's go. Someplace else? Sure, country, sure. Hey, waiter, check. Check. Now, there's a little place I know near Long Beach. Soft music, dancing under the stars. You want something, waiter? You asked for the check, sir? Oh, uh, he wants it. Him, give it to him. Hmm? Check, uh, sir. Or maybe you'd like hot hey, music. Now, hey, there's uh, a club in Hollywood that really... Eddie. Sit down. Huh? Eddie. Oh, uh, was... take care of it, will you, Monty? We'll make the rounds, baby, and what we don't hit tonight, we'll hit tomorrow. Take care of the man, Monty. We'll meet you out front. Yeah, oh, take oh. care of the man. $14.40. Uh, yes, sir. You got a pot? <laughs> I beg your pardon. Oh, never mind. Here, we'll just, just spread out the napkin here. Uh, yeah, yes, yes, sir. Here you are. occur to you, Mr. Stratton, that I might not want to go home, that I might have wanted to go somewhere with Eddie? 
Well, what you wanted wasn't so important. Oh, it wasn't? No, no. I see. What was important was the way Eddie was treating Dottie, you know, trying to shine up to you. You know, he shouldn't have done it in front of her like that. You know? Or in front of you. Oh, no, 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 no. That's, that's not what I mean. Hey, I... this is it, ain't it, bud? Hmm? Uh, yeah, well, I guess it is. Yes, this is it. Well, uh, can you wait, driver? I'll be right back. Okay, shoot. Look, uh... I'm I'm sorry about tonight. I, boy, you sort of got stuck with me, didn't you? Oh, that's silly. No, no, it isn't. I, I just never had much experience <laughs> with girls. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what's so funny? You. <laughs> you got stuck with the chair. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. I sure did. Didn't I? I was <laughs> worth it to get out of there. Well. Good night. Marty, wait. Hmm? Well, I'm sorry about tonight, too, but... You see, I haven't had too much experience myself with ball players. Well, I'm not exactly a ball player yet. I haven't made the team yet. Oh, you'll make it. Well, how do you know? You said you didn't know anything about baseball. I could learn. Uh, when, when do you go home to Omaha? Well, not for a while yet. I'm... I'm staying here with my aunt. Well, time for me to come and call on you? Could be. Not Ethel. Good night, Marty. In just a moment, our stars will return with Act Two of the Stratton story. I hear, Libby, you're collecting travel folders. Oh, just a dream so far, John. I got the wanderlust at Paramount watching the Pine Thomas production of Captain China. That's a rip-roaring adventure story if I ever saw one. John Payne in the title role gives a magnificent performance. What a fighter he is. And Gail Russell looks more beautiful than ever. Oh, she's ravishing. As a passenger on a tramp steamer, she adds a delightful bit of romance. The typhoon scenes in Captain China got me. They were so realistic, I, I practically hope the skipper keep the ship afloat. <laughs> well, the ship was definitely real, and so rough that when the picture was finished, Gail said she'd take the smooth sailing of a sailboat or a cabin cruiser from now on. Certainly more relaxing. And you can wear such pretty clothes when you know there's a box of Lux Flakes not far away. Gail has a sharkskin rayon slack suit she loves for sailing. Or, if she wants to tan, she takes along some little boy shorts in butcher linen and a jersey halter top. A cargo of Luxables, huh? Gail insists on Lux Flakes for all her washable rayons and nice cottons. They stay so fresh and bright all season. A smart girl. Washing tests prove that Lux Flakes care really makes a difference. Wrong washing methods soon fade colors, weaken fabrics. But even the most delicate shades stay enchantingly fresh and gay, the safe Lux Flakes way. And it's such easy care. Just a swish in these rich, gentle suds... And your dress, your blouse, your slacks are as lovely as ever. Why not give all your washables that lovely, luxe look? We return you now to William Keeley. Act two of The Stratton Story, winner of Photoplay Magazine's Gold Medal Award, starring James Stewart as Monty Stratton and June Allison as Ethel. Those next few weeks, well, they were quite a strain. Between falling in love and trying out for the White Sox, Monty just didn't know where he stood. But one afternoon in the dress... Hey, you, country. Oh, here it comes, Barney. Yeah, Mr. Dykes. Five innings this afternoon, Jimmy, and he didn't give up a hit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, kid, the team goes east tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, I know. We're going to take you with us. Barney, did you hear that? Did you hear what he said? What are you planning to do, Barney? Well, well I, I guess I don't exactly know. Well, look, Mr. Dykes, Barney's the best... Can't have best people man. hanging around doing nothing. I'll, 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 I'll do anything, Jimmy, anything. Like what? Yeah. Offhand, I can't think of anything. Unless you'd like to coach the young pitchers. <laughs> Get in the office. We'll sign a couple of contracts. The next day at the railroad station, Ethel was there to say goodbye to Mark. We didn't have very much time together, did we? No, no. Enough to make me wish there was more. Gee whiz, California turned out much better than I thought it was going to. 
Well, it was nice. You're making the team, wasn't it? Oh, no, that's not what I mean, you Lord. I know, Marty. Bye, Ethel. Let's get going, boy. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, right away. You will write, won't you? Well, I'll never be able to write down what I'm thinking, though. Well, all I know you're thinking about me if you don't write. Hey, country. Kiss her goodbye and get on the train. Hmm? Oh. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, that Mr. Dykes. He's a very smart man, darling. And then the season started. Detroit, Cleveland, St. Louis, and back to Chicago again. And so far, Monty Stratton's services to the Chicago White Sox consisted of batting fly balls to the outfield in the warm-up before the games. On this day, the Yankees were in town, murdering us. Well, the one thing about the dugout, Barney, you get a good view of the game. Boy, I, I ought to pay admission. Yeah, well, you can learn plenty just sitting here. Double for Gary. Uh, there goes Dykes. He's taking the pitcher out. What a gang, them Yankees. If a pitcher's going to get by, he's got to give them what they don't expect. Outthink them. Yeah, well, they don't have to worry about me outthinking them. Boy, every time I get paid, I feel like I'm stealing. Come on, Dykes. Put a pitcher in there. All right, Stratton. Get out there. Huh? huh? What, me? No, Jimmy, no, not at a time like this. But those Yankees have sent more pitches to Omaha. You wanted the kid to get a chance, didn't you? Well, he's got it. Now pitching for Chicago, number 25, Marty Stratton. You know who he's pitching to. Dickie, that's all. Just Bill Dickie. Another ball player. Forget about the runners, kid. Just pitch to him. Ah. Tell me it's foul, Jimmy. Tell me it's foul. What do you know? Clear over the center field wall. Omaha. Yeah, Marty went far in his big league debut from Chicago to Omaha. And that's how Ethel happened to have an unexpected visit. Oh, I'm so glad to see you, Marty. But what are you doing here in Omaha? I thought you were going to go down... I know, I know, I know, I know. And I'll just sit down. I've got a problem. But you said in your letter you might pitch this week. Yeah, I did. Well? That's what I want to talk to you about. Well, what happened? Uh, everything, honey. Now, you know, when I left you in California... What was the score? Now, that's not important. The thing that's bothering me is... is well, they can't expect you to win every game. Honey, they don't expect me to win any games. I've been farmed out to Omaha. Well, they don't put you in jail for playing in Omaha. I know, I know. There's nothing wrong with Omaha. It's just that... I don't know. I, I might not even make it here. First thing I know, I'll be back on the farm. Well... Don't you like the farm? Sure, sure. It's all right, but it... Well, it, then? Well, I, I don't... It's just that... That things are, are different now, that's all. Now there's you. Would it help any if... If I said I love you? That's the problem. Oh, I see. No, no, you don't see. It's, I don't know. No matter what I was doing, I kept thinking about you. And every time I'd see something exciting, I'd... I kept wishing that you were there to see it with me. I don't know if that's love, man. I really got it. Oh, you had me worried. But I, I had all sorts of plans for us. Now, now I, I don't know where I'm going. Oh, but it doesn't matter to me. It matters to me, honey. It matters to me. I, a man's got to know where he's going. Well, what do you want me to do? Well, just, just give me a chance to make it. I just want to make sure that I'm not going to let you down. All right, Marty, if, if that's what you want. No, you're what I want. Oh, I love you, Marty. You could never let me down. Marty. Yes, dear? What was the score? 16 to nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're a fine pitcher. Uh -huh. There's a tailor in Chicago who gives a suit of clothes to every ball player who hits the scoreboard in the center field. And as of yesterday, the New York Yankees are the best dressed team in baseball. <laughs> Monty pitched six ball games for Omaha, won them all, three shutouts. That was good enough for Jimmy Dykes. He brought Monty back to the White Sox. Only this time, a girl named Ethel tagged along because now she was Mrs. Molly Stratton. That night, a few of the boys gave him a little party at the hotel. 
just proves what I've been saying. How could a guy like you, country, get a gal like Ethel? Oh, it wasn't easy, Mr. Lyons. I just wouldn't take no for an answer. <laughs> oh, she's pretty, Ted, but she's not very smart. <laughs> Uh-oh. Here come the bombers. Bombers? Yeah, a few of the Yankee players. Yeah. Uh, this is what they look like, honey, when they're just civilians. <laughs> Hi, Lou. Hiya, fellas. Yeah, no. uh, I guess you know everybody. Oh, uh, this is Monty Stratton. Stratton, this is Bill Dickey. Mr. Dickey, Mrs. Stratton. How do you do? How do you do? Well, we met you earlier this season, didn't we, Stratton? Man, you met me and everything I pitched. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's nice to have met you, Mrs. Stratton. Thank you. Oh, Why, he's awfully nice. Uh-huh. Well, wait till you see him tomorrow, honey. Boy, they, they don't call them the bombers for nothing. Wow. Some poor guy's gonna have a rough afternoon. Yeah, could be. Hey, by the way, Barney, who's Dyke's gonna pitch tomorrow? You. Yeah. Who, me? A couple of the boys have sore arms. Uh, Ethel. Yes, dear? Our baggage, you unpacked anything yet? No, not yet. Don't. That next day was Monty's real start as a big league ball player. Monty won that ball game all by himself, even to driving in the wooden run. And that's just about the way it went all the rest of that season. Not that he won every game, but from then on, the fans knew that Monty Stratton was just about as fine a pitcher as they'd see in the league. In October, Monty and Ethel went down to the farm. <laughs> Well, now, if you'll call off your dog, ma'am, I'm selling some books here that you might like to see. Monty! Oh, land sakes, I didn't even know you, son. New clothes and all. Yeah, that isn't the only thing new, Ma. Here's Ethel. Hello, Ma. Oh, Ethel. <laughs> Seems to me, son, you've been running over with luck. Oh, I sure have, Ma. Got a new car, too. Oh, yes. Bought myself a bucket of bolts. Hey, uh, oh, Eddie, uh, Ernie. Uh, uh, howdy, Monty, howdy. Ethel, this is my cousin Ernie. Uh, if it wasn't for Ernie, I never could have left here. Hello, Ernie. Ma'am, here you're pitching good, Monty. Well, don't tell me you're a fan now. Nope, just heard about it. Well, I guess you won't be needing me anymore, huh, Monty? Well, uh, I sort of wish you'd stick around, Ernie. Uh... We got a lot of things he could fix up around here. A lot you know well, about no, always, it. Always, always fences to mend and some fresh paint, maybe. And then, uh, maybe, maybe better build one of those nursery rooms. You leave your mouth open like that, Ma, you're liable to catch a fly in it. <laughs> Monty. Ethel. Yeah, well, now, how about some supper, Grandma? <laughs> Monty went through the next season like a house of fire. The fans ate him up. The newspapers, too. He was all that Jimmy Dyke said he was. Right now, Barney, I wouldn't trade Monty Stratton for any other pitcher in baseball. What a future that boy's got. And Monty had someone else now to win games for. A brand new baby boy. But after a while, I began to worry. Ethel, too. Something had happened to Monty. As often as not, he'd, he'd disappear after a game. He'd tell Ethel it was for interviews, newspaper guys, but I knew different, and so did Ethel. Anyway, they were back in Texas now, and Monty was a farmer again for the winter. A little dressy, ain't you, son? My land, Ethel, just look at the dude. Now, shave, too. Oh, no, not another press interview, Monty, not down here. No, 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 no. I just thought maybe we ought to go out and do a little celebrating. You know, Junior's going to be six months old tomorrow, so come on, come on, we're going out to dinner. Well... Give me a chance to catch my breath. You know, Ma, this is an event. We don't get to do much celebrating in Chicago. Well, grab him while you can, honey. Well, now, look, you two girls are going to sit around and chew the fat. I'll go and celebrate myself. Goodbye. No, oh, no, no. Hang on to him, Ma. I'll be ready in about five minutes. Would you, uh, care to dance, Mrs. Stratton? Monty, you're acting very strangely. Ordering champagne and now... Well, you... a fine thing if a man has to plead with his own wife to dance with him. But, darling, you don't dance. You like to dance, don't you? Well, yes, I do. Well, maybe it's about time I learn. Now, come on, come on. Well, you're going to look awfully funny out there. It won't be the first time. Now. 